respect respect other people i know that a lot of you are young if you take anything out of that diatribe on on religion and science and how they seem to be fighting in the united states and i don't understand why because they're not really that incompatible with each other um yeah just just respect other people and it, it'll, it'll be okay it'll be fine uh let's see where where is the next question Ah, okay, Chris J asks, are schools in South Korea more advanced than schools in the U.S.? They're not more advanced. They're definitely not more advanced. The thing is, is that Korean culture values very strongly education. As a result, schools are very serious. They're not very advanced, but they're very serious. And because they're very serious, they expect students to do well or they get punished, sometimes physically with like sticks and stuff. I, I saw this in my school a few times, children being hit with sticks, and it made me very, very uncomfortable. But the point is, is that Korean students focus very much on memorization because they, they take tests. And the tests are more important than what you learn. Your score is more important than what you learn. And I think that's a terrible way to teach children. I think it kills the innate creativity in children. And I think that it, it does the complete opposite of educating children. I think it teaches children how to be cogs in a machine. And I think it teaches children that it doesn't matter what they think. It doesn't matter what they know. It doesn't matter what they can talk about. It matters if they can give the correct answer when a problem exists. And like answers are very important. Answers are incredibly important in science and in all industries. But I think the critical thinking is more important a lot of the time and that's one thing that american schools despite the fact that american schools are really really terrible for many of the same reasons american schools do encourage individualism a lot more and do encourage critical thinking a lot more than korean schools. so although korean students are learning calculus during like their second or third year of high school and many people don't do that in the US some people do in advanced classes but it's not guaranteed at all here in korea although they do that they still have a lot of problems, just like every country has with its education system. I think that we should all take a chapter and learn a bit from the, the, uh, like the Northern European countries, uh, Norway, and things like that. Sweden, I guess. Yeah, so just, just to name a few countries that probably have really cool education systems that I've heard wonderful things about, like Sweden and Norway, Switzerland is really good. I've met some people from Switzerland and they seem pretty okay with the education system. So yeah, if we just learn a few things from Northern Europe, that, that would probably be good because they, they do better than us, not only in standardized tests, but they also tend to speak more languages and languages are really important to me as well. So, uh, da -da -da -da, Samuel Cruz, we already answered your question. Uh, Dragon Hearts 15 asks, Hi Magnus, I was wondering how to start a YouTube video. I already discussed that. A lot of feedback. Uh, yes. So he got some feedback saying, do a video of you strangling yourself. As I said, people, people on YouTube are sort of jerks sometimes. Don't pay attention to the haters. They're just really angry because, you know, you have a YouTube channel and you're willing to make something. Whereas they feel pretty cool if they like make fun of you for it. Yeah, they're just jerks. They're probably pretty young too, so don't don't hate them too much. They they probably don't know any better. Diego Matias seven three two asks me, "Are you married?" And my answer to you is, "No, I am not." Um, <laughs> yes, but I'm not married. Not married. Da 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 da. I uh, I'm in my mid twenties. I think I'm a little bit too young to get married. Also, I I am not in a position in my life financially where I would feel okay getting married and possibly having children. I don't feel that I have enough money saved up yet to fulfill my children's dreams, whatever they may be. So when I have more money and I can assure myself that I can pay for a college education for my children, because although I think it's very important for children to be independent and like work their way through college, I had to work my way through college and I missed a lot of opportunities to do extracurricular like research and things that would have helped me in my career because I had to work instead. Like I couldn't do summer internships because I had to do a part-time job selling cigarettes so that I could pay my rent. Yeah, that's, that's not good, I think. And I think that even if students work during university, I think that 
I want to help support my children so that they can do things like internships and do cool things to learn and spend their time doing something useful for the world, not working in a dead-end job that is going to be useless after graduation anyway. So yes, not, not married yet. Maybe, maybe in the future. Or maybe I'll just end up dying old and alone playing video games, which wouldn't be that bad either. Um, I've always wondered if I'm really the type of person who can get married. Sort of marriage, marriage is really complicated. If you don't like understand how difficult marriage is, ask some married people sometime. Marriage is really, really difficult. And I, I worry about what would happen if I got married and then ended up getting divorced. It's sort of a scary, scary idea. Um, Red Phantom AI says, I, I gave you my question. If you had a kitten that could do anything, what would it do? My kitten would sit on my shoulder and meow a really, probably classical music. Yeah, classical music. Maybe like Pachelbel's Canon. I would have a cat that sat on my shoulder and like meowed classical piano music. That would be cool. This question should go first because I asked a while ago, what is your favorite genre of music? I don't have a favorite genre of music. In fact, I listen to all sorts of stuff. Most of it is not in English. I like non-English music, if you could consider that a genre. Other than dinos in space, what else are you interested in? Geology, microbiology, marine biology, linguistics. Did I already say linguistics? I don't know. Many, many things. Many, many, many things. I, I have no time to learn about the things I want to learn and continue working. Will you ever go back to America? If so, what state would you live in? Um, I may go back to the United States to visit family. I may eventually go back to the United States to work in a different industry if I end up stop doing YouTube. If I end up not doing YouTube, then maybe I'll go back to America. But, um... I don't think I'll ever live in America again. That's that's just my idea right now. That could change in the future. But I don't know what state I would live in. I have no idea. But I may go back to visit family. And of course, family issues like funerals and things like that happen. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes you have to go back to where you come from because, you know, someone that you're close to passes away and things like that. And sometimes if you don't go to those things, your family hates you forever. So, yeah, you know. Some things you have to do sometimes. Some sacrifices for family. Yes. Uh, that is not a question. Uh, we already answered that question. Stellars. Stellars5. Stellars5 asks, Are you Asian? I'm going to assume you, assume you mean Asian. Um, I'm part Asian. I'm not 100% Asian. I'm not 50% Asian. I am part Asian. That's That's really about all you need to know. As I said, I'm mixed race, so there you go. Mixed race, Asian and Caucasian, part Japanese, but not, not half, which is why I don't look half Japanese. I, I wish, I wish I were half Japanese. I would feel like I look more like my culture. I feel like my personal culture would be better represented if I were more Japanese than I am biologically at the moment. Uh, you're still awesome either way. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Stellars5. What are your hobbies apart from YouTube? 65 Electro asks, My hobbies other than YouTube are pretty simple. I play video games. I teach English. I guess that's a hobby, sort of. I enjoy teaching. And I enjoy reading. I enjoy reading things about science, about space, about dinosaurs. I read constantly. In fact, most of my day is probably spent catching up on news and science articles. Yeah, <laughs> so, oh, my life is so exciting, spending all day in my, my apartment with Mr. Swiggles, doing, you know, watching Game of Thrones, playing video games. Yeah, totally, totally awesome life, I know, right? <laughs> it's, it's actually a pretty fun life, although I guess I could be doing more to advance our species into space, but I'm doing that through you, through you. Motivating you to try to get our species into space because I currently am not working in the space industry, but you can when you grow up. I've already missed my opportunity, unfortunately, but you can do it. I believe in you, all of you. Um, what is your favorite planet in Kerbal Space Program and real life? Michael Kroll. Um, Michael Kroll, my favorite planet in Kerbal Space Program is not a planet. It is probably the moon Minmus. 
Minimus is an amazing place to go in Kerbal Space Program because it has such low gravity. Yeah, it has really low gravity. So you can you can do all sorts of things. It's really easy to land on Minmus. You can get a really, really close orbit with your satellite, so you're really close to the ground. It's just an amazing place to go with low gravity. And that being said, the my favorite place in real life in our solar system, my favorite planet, is not a planet or a moon, although there are some really, really cool moons around Saturn and Jupiter. My favorite is actually a dwarf planet called Ceres. Ceres is the largest asteroid in the asteroid belt, and we currently have a space probe called Dawn, New Horizons is going to Pluto, and it can see Pluto now, actually, which is really cool. And we have Dawn that just finished at Vesta. Vesta? Yeah, Vesta asteroid. And it's currently going to Ceres. I don't know why they didn't go to Ceres first, because that would have been totally cool to see first. We're going to get our first view of dwarf planets in our solar system. It's going to be so cool. We're going to learn so much about Ceres. I can't wait to see the first pictures. But Ceres is the largest asteroid in the asteroid belt. It probably would have ended up absorbing the rest of the asteroids in the asteroid belt over enough time. But Jupiter's gravity actually prevents the asteroids in the asteroid belt from clumping up too much. It sort of like shakes up the asteroid belt due to gravitational tidal forces and stuff, which is cool, but also sort of unfortunate for us who would like another planet, because that would be pretty cool if Ceres became a, like a true planet. But as it is, the fact that all these... These asteroids are in little pieces are very useful for our space economy because we can go and mine asteroids. Mining a very big planet is very expensive and large gravity wells are difficult to get out of. But asteroids, on the other hand, are very easy to mine. Well, they're not easy to mine yet, but they will be because they have almost no gravity. So that'll be really, really awesome in the future. Akshay Koshi asks, I have no idea how to pronounce your name, are you James Bond, but hiding your identity by saying that you're from Korea? I'm not from Korea, I live in Korea, I'm from the United States. Um, because you don't have, you don't have no accent. Um, you don't have no accent. Um, you probably have an accent if you, if you use English like that. Uh, I grew up in the South in the United States, but I l learned how to speak standard American English by watching the news and talking to well-educated teachers. Also, when I spoke Southern dialect to my mother one time, she's not from the South, she hit me, which is one of the few times she's ever hit me in her life, actually. So I decided not to speak Southern dialect. I speak standard American English, which is sort of sad because I wish I were bi-dialectal. But no, no, I'm not James Bond, although I do look amazing in a suit. Nico Gret Tino, Nico Gratino asks, do you enjoy your job? And if so, why? And if not, why? Um, okay, so first of all, I do enjoy my job. YouTube, YouTube is my job. I enjoy it because I get to talk to you guys, get to play video games, and I get paid to play video games. And that's really, really cool. I enjoy playing video games. I enjoy telling you about video games. I enjoy talking to developers such as Tyler Owen, one of the developers of Lacuna Passage. You should totally go check that out. It's on Kickstarter. Check, check the links below. So I enjoy my job a lot. I think I do a lot of good for my subscribers in terms of telling them about games. Good for developers by spreading awareness like Rose, how the developers of Rose gave me lots of games to give out to my subscribers and show my subscribers the game, etc., etc. And I think that if I can motivate some of you to join the space industry in the future or study something interesting such as microbiology or linguistics or who knows what else, there are tons of things in the sciences that you can study. So I, I enjoy the sort of influence that I seem to have over you guys and like talking to you guys about such educational topics as well as working with developers and playing video games. So it's all cool. I love it. If you're talking about me teaching English, I didn't enjoy teaching English in the public school system very much because of social hierarchy problems and other, other teachers respecting me, but I enjoy private tutoring. Private tutoring is really fun. I get to work very closely with students and I get to teach them English very quickly because they learn very quickly because I know how to teach. When I'm working in a public school, I can't choose what I teach. And private schools, too, I can't choose what I teach. So it doesn't end up working very well. Mostly it ends up just being like doing workbooks. And workbooks do not teach you how to speak English. If you guys are learning English, do not learn English from books. Find native speaker friends and talk to them. Talk to them every day. Talk to them for like two or three hours a day. That, that will teach you English. 
When I came to Korea, I just started speaking Korean with people. I used like the internet to look up individual words and used a dictionary in my phone to look up words. And then I just used the words. And, you know, I skipped like two or three Korean classes when I was finally tested to see what level I was at. And I've, I've only been living in Korea for like a year and a half. So that's how you learn languages. That's how I learned Japanese. That's how I learned Korean. That's how you do it. Just speak, speak, speak all the time. Speak every day and watch movies and listen to music. Don't don't do workbooks that's just dumb learning how to like answer very small not open-ended questions by like copying grammar from one page to another that's not how you learn a language um elezar barnett asks what is mr swiggles's real name mr swiggles's real name i am not going to tell you because mr swiggles deserves his privacy and i respect that um but yeah, his name is obviously not Mr. Swiggles. Um, da -da -da. I've already given tips for YouTubers. How long have you been interested in space? I already answered that question. My favorite video game already answered that. What got you interested in space? Wow, you guys really like, you, you really want to know why I got interested in space, don't you? Um, okay, Triple the Cheese says... As all children were interested in dinosaurs at one point, what has kept you knowledgeable about them? How have you remembered all these interesting facts? Um, I read. I realize that it probably sounds really cliche because your teachers probably said like, you need to read more, you need to read more. And like a lot of those teachers don't know what the heck they're talking about because they're really old and stuff. But this is one of the few things that, yeah, they're right. You should read, you should read a lot. You should read books, you should read websites, you should read articles, you should, Anything that you're interested in, there are communities online where people talk about that stuff every day. Like really, just go, just go and like read what people say and read some research and read, like watch documentaries on YouTube. There's so many free documentaries on YouTube, man. Just go and just go and learn and search, use Google. You can find it. Uh, there, what other things? I guess like technically university classes or something else you can do if you have the money to go to university not everyone does if you have the opportunity to go to university i very much encourage you to do so and learn about things that you're passionate about because the the best thing about university isn't the classes that you take it's the people you meet who are also interested in the same things you can learn a lot from them and your professors are people who have dedicated their lives to studying the things that you're learning about in their class so after class go to their office and be like sir I am passionate about paleontology. I want to learn everything about dinosaurs. Please, please teach me. And they will teach you. My phonetics teacher, my phonology professor, she taught me a ton of stuff that no one else in the class learned about because I was like, I'm, I'm passionate about this topic. Please teach me. And she did. So yeah, internet, online forums, books, research, university professors. Go, go learn everything. Learn, learn it all. Um... Yeah, and that's also how you remember things, by reading it again <laughs> and using it on a semi-regular basis. Mm. 